Welcome to Breakaway Funding's October webinar. Thank you for coming. We hold these webinars once each month, bringing you valuable information on a variety of subjects from using crowdfund investing in your self-directed IRA to investing fundamentals for the 21st century. We hope you enjoy them and will make our webinar series a recurring event on your Google or Outlook calendar. A little about Breakaway Funding. Breakaway Funding is a complete capital raising and investing ecosystem providing investors comprehensive and transparent due diligence documentation, analysis tools, and the technology platform for you to make informed investment decisions through a secure, convenient, and regulatory compliant website. Good morning, my name is Kim Castleonis. I am the former CEO of Circle Bank, which I built and operated for nearly two decades, and I am the founder and managing partner of Breakaway Funding, which was created to step into the void in the private capital market by bringing together ready, investor-ready entrepreneurs and community investors like you. Because of the opportunities introduced by the JOBS Act of 2012, we believe that crowdfund investing provides a clear path to sustainable economic growth through partnerships between investors, entrepreneurs, and local financial institutions. We are excited that you have decided to learn more about what opportunities crowdfund investing awaits you. To help set your expectations, I will be talking for about 25 minutes, bringing you an overview of crowdfunding, followed by a few examples of current crowdfund investment opportunities available on the Breakaway platform. After which, I will introduce our guest speaker today, who will be sharing with you how you can invest in crowdfunded securities in your self-directed IRA account. We will stop for questions after each presenter, so please feel free to send your questions in at any time during our presentation. To ask a question, use the conversation box on the right-hand side of your screen. We will get to, to as many questions as possible during the presentation. A message from our attorneys. I am not a licensed advisor. The opinions and information contained in this material is based on sources believed to be reliable and are written in good faith, but no representation or warranty expressed or implied is made as to their accuracy or completeness. Now let's get started. So what is this thing we call crowdfunding? Well, simply put, crowdfunding is defined as when a group of people combine their economic power to support a project, organization, or company they believe in, usually via the internet. And we talk as if crowdfunding is new, and it is not. We have some very cool technology today, but it is the way organizations and projects have been financed for hundreds of years. Let me give you a few examples. In 1872, when Congress was debating how to fund the $300,000 cost to construct the pedestal on which the Statue of Liberty would sit, to no avail, Joseph Pulitzer, outraged and frustrated, appealed to the American people and said, give me whatever you can. To incent larger contributions, he offered to send contributors of $25 or more a miniature replica of Our Lady Liberty. This gift, in exchange for a contribution, is now known as rewards-based crowdfunding. Amazingly, he raised nearly $100,000 within a five-month period by aggregating the small dollar amounts from a large group of people. In another example, Benjamin Franklin wanted to purchase a printing press but did not have the capital to do so. So he went door to door pre-selling subscriptions, aggregating small dollar amounts from a large group of people to accumulate the funds necessary to purchase the printing press. This pre-sale of a product is also known as rewards-based crowdfunding. There are four different crowdfunding models, donation and rewards-based, which are not regulated by any governmental agency. And then there is debt and equity crowdfunding which are considered securities and therefore regulated under the securities and exchange laws in this country. Debt and equity crowdfunded securities are the subject of this presentation and in which you will be able to invest in your self-directed IRA or 401k accounts as Lamar will explain later. I will brief briefly describe each. We are all familiar with donation-based crowdfunding. The donor makes a contribution with no expectation of economic return. The challenge for entrepreneurs trying to use this model is that donors have difficulty contributing to for-profit companies. Therefore, this model is predominantly used by philanthropic causes. We have previously discussed rewards-based crowdfunding. In this model, the donor contributes cash and in return receives some kind of tchotchke, 
which value is close to the amount contributed. Rewards-based crowdfunding is great for companies who want to get market feedback on their product, but again, generally speaking, not a place where entrepreneurs can raise significant amounts of capital. In debt-based crowdfunding, the contributor, known as an investor, steps into the lender role just like a bank. The investor lends to the company money with the expectation of future repayment of their principal with or without interest on a fixed schedule. For investors, this is a great way to supplement your income because you have a known exit. As loans have a maturity date, the date at which the funds are to be repaid in full. If you are investing in debt-based crowdfunding securities in your self-directed IRA, those interest payments are tax deferred, meaning you don't pay taxes when the interest is earned. Please talk to your financial advisor or CPA for more details about the stack tax status of your retirement accounts. In equity-based crowdfunding, investors contribute cash and receive equity instruments or profit-sharing arrangements and participate alongside the founders in the future success of the company. The primary benefit of becoming an equity investor is that there is no upward limit to what you can earn, assuming the company does well. This slide gives you a sense of what has been happening in recent history, from the Irish Loan Fund in the 1700s to Kickstarter in 2009. What is important to note here is that between three different crowdfunding or peer-to-peer -peer platforms, nearly $8 billion in activity has been transacted since 2006. So where does crowdfunding fit on the funding continuum for companies? Well, depending upon the type of crowdfunding model used, anywhere from the prototype to the startup phase. But the beauty of crowdfunding is that it can be used by entrepreneurs at any stage of their growth life cycle. Now, as I mentioned earlier, because of opportunities introduced by the JOBS Act of 2012, we believe that crowdfund investing provides a clear path to sustainable economic growth through partnerships and engagement by investors, entrepreneurs, and local financial institutions. Let me explain why. The securities and exchange laws in this country define who can invest in private equity capital, meaning privately held companies. It is those very companies that have the potential to not only create jobs in this country, but also who produce some very exciting and very attractive returns. Just think, at one time, Google, Facebook, and Twitter were all privately held companies. Imagine where you would be today if you had had access to those early investment opportunities. So how did the Jobs Act come to pass? Well, think back to where we were in 2011 and 2012, the Great Recession or financial crisis, as it is called, characterized by high unemployment, capital markets through which companies depend upon investments to grow, expand, and create jobs were non-existent, and a time where we had a presidential election. Someone looked around the country and noticed there was $17 trillion in cash sitting idle in American retirement accounts. And they noticed that this cash didn't necessarily belong to the pension funds or big institutional investors, rather that it belonged to us, the average American. That was a lot of money sitting on the sidelines that could be used to invest in private companies to help jumpstart the U.S. economy. The only problem was, because the securities and exchange laws, the average American was precluded from investing in private equity securities. And who can change the laws? Well, Congress, of course and thus the Jobs Act of 2012 was born. And the Jobs Act does several things, many of which I'm not gonna get into today, with the exception of Title III, what we like to call the American Angels Act. This is the provision which grants all Americans the opportunity to invest in privately held companies, a luxury that until now has been reserved for the wealthy few. Title III does two primary things, first, it defines the parameters under which unaccredited investors can invest in privately held companies. The investment thresholds are based on your income level, as are other securities laws. If you earn up to $100,000 a year, you will soon be able to invest the greater of $2,000 or 5% of your income, so between two and $5,000 every 12 months. If you earn $100,000 or more, you will be able to invest up to 10% of your income up to $100,000. The second provision of Title II defines the parameters under which private companies can raise up to $1 million per year 
from an unlimited number of unaccredited investors. This is very exciting as it will now enable companies to bypass the gatekeepers of capital and go straight to their communities for the necessary capital to grow and prosper. And while the law was passed in April 2012, the SEC has yet to release the Title III regulations. Because of that, many states, including the state of California, which introduced AB 2096 in February, have taken matters into their own hands and have begun passing intrastate crowdfunding investment exemptions. This slide shows you how many other states are in the process or have passed crowdfunding exemptions. So let's talk about who can invest in securities-based crowdfunded investments. There are basically three categories of investors as defined by federal and state securities laws. Accredited investors, top of the food chain, qualified investors, for California only, a large contingent between the accredited and non-accredited group, and non-accredited investors. Who can invest is driven by the type of security exemption selected by the company raising capital. This information can be found in the offering document. A quick description of each of these three categories. Accredited investors are those who earn $200,000 a year individually or $300,000 jointly, or have net worth excluding the equity in their home of a million dollars. This group represents about 2 to 3% of the American population, and statistics show that only half of accredited investors are active in the private capital markets. Qualified investors are characterized as those that earn $100,000 or more per year and have net worth excluding the equity in their home of $250,000 or net worth of $500,000 or more, again excluding their, the equity in their primary residence. In California and particularly in the San Francisco Bay Area, this is an enormous untapped group of prospective investors for entrepreneurs desiring to raise capital. Finally, non-accredited investors which describes everyone else who doesn't meet the accredited or qualified investor. And as we have discussed, Title III of the Jobs Act of 2012 was specifically created to allow this group, the 99%, to legally participate in private equity. There are many benefits of crowdfunding. From no fees to join a platform in order to see deal flow to portfolio diversification, ease of identifying, reviewing, and investing opportunities to learn or to get the wisdom of the crowd, freedom to invest in companies that mean something to you, or the ability to own these investments in your IRA or 401k account. Crowdfunding is flexible and makes available much of which has been kept secret from the average investor. Investing, irrespective of what type, whether stocks purchased through the New York Stock Exchange, commodities or bonds, involves risks and private equity investing is risky. So be sure you read the business plans and other due diligence documentation and ask questions. Access to good information and high quality market data, interactive sensitivity analysis tools, and the wisdom of others can help you in thoughtful investment decisions. Something else to consider when choosing a crowdfunding platform is where you as an investor are going to get the most protection. That is which platforms are operating with standards that are consistent with the regulatory and best industry best practices, and being offered through a FINRA licensed dealer or in compliance with the securities and exchange laws. Not all crowdfunding platforms are created equal. At Breakaway Funding, all of our equity raises are conducted through a registered broker dealer, someone who is licensed by FINRA. Everyone looks at investing through different lens or through different filters. Before making any kind of an investment decision, it is important to understand how you look at investing. This may make it easier for you to choose between various investment opportunities. What levels of risk are you comfortable with? Are you looking to make investments that have social impact? What are your emotional behaviors? What terms of investments are you looking for? What are your short and long-term liquidity needs? What is the risk versus reward you are comfortable with? As we've discussed previously, in addition to understanding your investment filters, having access to comprehensive due diligence is equally important. 
as former bankers, this is what our due diligence looks like. Now let's take a look at a couple of investment opportunities currently available on the Breakaway Funding site to see if they match your investment objectives. Our review will not do them justice, therefore you are encouraged to listen to their previously recorded investor pitch, which can be found on the blog section of our website and which we will send to you via link after the webinar. For those of you who live and work in the San Francisco Bay Area, perhaps you remember Cadillac Bar and Grill located south of Market the place to be in the 1980s and 1990s. During the height of its popularity, the Cadillac was displaced by the Moscone Center. Today, Michael is bringing the Cadillac back. He has a lease in the Twitter building, a great location characterized by high density, close to the public transportation, and in an area in which there are significant tax breaks. Michael is raising 1.5 million in debt and equity. You have two options to invest. There is a $60,000 minimum investment for equity and a $10,000 minimum investment for debt. The debt offering is for three years at a 12% annual interest rate. If your investment filters includes competitive returns, investing locally, and a desire to help create jobs and stimulate the economy, then perhaps becoming a part of the ownership culture of Cadillac Bar and Grill is for you. For more information about this offering, please go to breakawayfunding.com slash Cadillac. Our next opportunity is E2 Lighting. E2 Lighting specializes in the marketing and sales of LED lighting for residential, commercial, and industrial markets, offering a one-to-one -one retrofit energy solution. Their product provides more than an 85% savings compared to traditional lighting, and which lasts 20 times longer. The LED industry is a $50 billion disruptive technology that's subsidized by the U.S. government. It is estimated that LED will capture 60% of the global market in the next five years. With nearly $3 million in sales in the pipeline, E2 is raising $1 million capital for inventory and operations through traditional debt securities. The term of the debt is five years, it pays a 10% interest rate, and there is a $5,000 minimum investment required. Additionally, they are offering a 10% discount of all lighting products for investor personal and business needs. If your investment filter includes clean energy, creating jobs for the local economy and long-term income, perhaps an investment in E2 lighting is for you. Finally, Functional Foods Technology of San Francisco. FFT produces a slow-carb, low-glycemic line of bakery products designed with significantly more protein and fiber, less sugar and carbs to provide sustained nourishment for diabetics and which helps to eliminate cravings and overeating. There are over 100 million obese diabetic and pre-diabetics who have gone ignored and underserved. This is a $20 billion market for potential goods in this category. 1 billion low carb and low glycemic diabetic safe food market and a 5 billion gluten free market. 1% of this market equates to $60 million in revenue potential for FFT. The term of the offering are convertible notes, meaning that the investments will accrue interest, and at the time of the next raise, your investment will be converted into equity. The minimum investment for the FFT is $1,000. If your investment filters include helping to provide options for diabetics and others by providing healthier food snacks, having access to huge market potential, and owning a company that is very scalable, then perhaps an investment in FFT is for you. That brings us to the end of my presentation about crowdfunding and examples of investment opportunities for your consideration, which opportunities you can now invest through your self-directed IRA. I will take a few questions and then turn it over to our next speaker. And our first question is from Devin. Devin asks, when will non-accreditors be eligible to begin investing? Well, fortunately, Devin, you can begin investing today. What determines who can invest is the type of security exemption the company has chosen to raise money. You can conduct a quick check by clicking on the qualification tab under each investment tombstone on our website for a detailed description of which investors are eligible to invest in any particular investment opportunity on the Breakaway platform. 
great question. Our next question comes from Carol. Carol asks, can I invest in my IRA through your website? Great question, Carol, definitely. Once you've registered as an investor, all you need to do is set up your trading account. This will enable you to transfer funds from another institution through which you can purchase or make your investments in one or more opportunities on the breakaway site. You can set up your self-directed IRA on our platform, or of course, you will be able to talk to our guest speaker, Lamar Baxter, who will be joining us shortly. That is all the time we have for questions. If you did not get your question asked, please feel free to contact me at kcasleonis at breakawayfunding.com. That's K-K-A-S-E-L-I-O-N-I-S at breakawayfunding.com or call me at 415-729-9482. Again, that's 415-729-9482.